Greetings. I'm here beside a very special tree in my forest. In fact, the most special tree in my forest. This is an American chestnut. And I just found a beautiful little chestnut right here at the foot of the tree. Surprise, surprise. The American chestnut is a tree that's on the verge of extinction. They get a disease called the chestnut blight. I'm not going to get too deep into that. I'm sure you can find lots of information about it. I want to talk about how you can help save this species by doing exactly what I just did. I'm going to give you some tips. Most of the time, <laughs> in fact, pretty much all the time, you're going to find sterile chestnuts, little tiny ones like this, that you're looking for a viable chestnut like this. But first you have to find a chestnut tree, American chestnut. Again, you can find lots of information about how to do that yourself. And also, if you watch the second last episode of my series, Tommy's Tree Talks, in which I'm showing a couple of chestnuts that I found under a very hard done by American chestnut just over there. And it's suffering horribly from the blight. So I strongly suggest watching that episode because I show aspects of the tree that will help you to identify them. Because you're not going to find one like this. Again, watch that episode and you'll learn about this tree. I want to talk now about finding the nuts. Because as I just said, you are going to be finding primarily, if not exclusively, these sterile ones, these little tiny ones, instead of this big, beautiful, viable one. Now, finding these sterile ones is not a bad thing, because it means that the tree, although it is obviously suffering from the blight, is still able to produce these nuts, even though they're, they're sterile. Now, what you're going to find is these husks. This is one that has opened and the nuts have fallen out. That typically happens up in the tree, but sometimes a strong wind or a heavy thunderstorm will knock them out of the tree before they even open. And so it's important to have some good gloves and something like a chisel that you can use to pry it open if you find a husk that hasn't opened. As you can see by looking at this husk, there are three marks at the bottom. Those are actually the, I don't know what you'd call them, the sockets for lack of a better word within which the actual nuts sit. And the husk is closed, and as the nuts develop, if they do, the husk will grow in size to accommodate them. Now this is the key. Sorry, I'm being harassed by mosquitoes in mid-October, thanks to climate change. The key is that, the, as you can see, there are three marks here. They almost always have three nuts inside of a husk. Now, if they're all sterile, then the husk is going to remain small and the seeds will never develop into full size. Now, here's the thing. 
that you're not going to read about in any book and that you're not going to hear about from anyone except me. And that is that you need to be on the lookout for a very special sterile nut. Now, look at the difference between these two sterile nuts. One is tiny and one is quite large, triple the size. The difference is that the larger one was in the same husk as this viable nut. And as you will see, they fit together like a glove because inside, this is not the husk. I couldn't find the husk. It was obviously a larger husk. And so inside of that husk, there was this viable one and two sterile ones. And the sterile ones were acting like bookends around the viable one. And so because the tree had developed this nut that actually was viable, it sent more energy to that husk. And so even the sterile ones grew larger, still wafer thin, wafer thin, because there's nothing in there, but larger nonetheless. And this is what you're looking for. If you're lucky enough, while you're finding hundreds of these tiny sterile ones, if you suddenly find a large sterile one, then you know that somewhere nearby, very nearby, within just probably a few footfalls at most around that spot, if not yet, because it could still be overhead yet to fall, then there's a good possibility that you will find a viable one whenever it comes down. Now here's where the problem lies. You are not the only one that's looking for these nuts. Rodents are looking for them. And the chances are that the rodent is going to find them. So you have to outcompete the rodents, which is why I'm at an advantage here, because I live in this forest, in my house, but within this forest. And so during the season, I'm here constantly. I'm here at first light, and I'm here throughout the day, and again at dusk, scouring and searching. This area is clear by no accident. I cleared it all out so that I could look more effectively for the nuts. I found this one at daybreak. I was out here before the rodents. Now, now that you understand this, this is the key, is to look for the larger sterile ones and make note of where you found it, because that's where, if you manage to outcompete the rodents, you will eventually find the large one, if they haven't got it already, unfortunately. So you have to be vigilant. Now let's talk about these rodents because they are the reason that the species is so badly in decline. The expert wisdom, the prevailing point of view amongst so-called experts is that the blighted trees are not producing viable nuts. Well, watch my episode from last week and see how right they are. Now, now that we've established that the blighted trees are still producing viable nuts, here's the thing. Humanity 
in all of our stupidity, we have basically obliterated all of the predators that would be killing these rodents, especially the worst of them is the chipmunk. And the interesting thing about this cleared area that I've created is it showcases the various holes from the chipmunks. And each of those holes is a different burrow that hosts a different family of chipmunks. And there's nothing special about this spot for there to be so many. That's the density that you will find everywhere. Just walk through any forest and you will hear chipmunks. Every few paces as you walk along, you'll hear another chipmunk pestering you and letting everybody know, oh, there's a talking monkey, all my fellow chipmunks, because they're entitled and we are not. And that's our doing. Now, here's the problem. In case you wonder why I hate chipmunks. A squirrel, when it finds a nut, it buries the nut so that it can dig it up later. And they tend to forget a certain amount of them, which is how so many of these nut bearing trees are able to reproduce so widely. They count on the dispersal of these rodents and for them to be forgotten or killed so that the young trees will sprout and not have been eaten. A chipmunk doesn't do that. A chipmunk, when it finds a nut, it takes it and puts it in its burrow where it's going to eat it over the winter. And none of these trees will sprout. Zero. And so there's no opportunity for the chestnut tree to be able to reproduce. It would have to put out so many nuts that the chipmunks wouldn't be able to eat them all. And that's not the case, especially because there are so few trees now that even a beautiful, perfectly healthy one like this is not able to cross pollinate, which is a requirement of the species. Now, the grandmother chestnut tree is right over there within range but she's been dying of the blight for over a decade now. And so she's not producing a lot of flowers. In fact, most years she's producing none. So it's quite amazing that this year she produced three, three husks. There were only two viable nuts and I got them both. They're now in my refrigerator where they will striate over the winter and then in the spring, I will be planting more trees, as I do every year here in my forest. But even, for example, last year, when she produced nothing, I found viable chestnuts. And there are no other chestnut trees around here that are large enough to produce any kind of flowers yet. That's years away. And so that proves that this tree is able to self-pollinate. Now, this is at a very, very tiny percentage because in the early season, this tree is covered in flowers. And I find hundreds and hundreds of these sterile nuts every fall and only two or three viable ones. This year was a great year. I managed to find four, but that's wonderful. That's a great success because I have a 100% rate success rate at sprouting viable ones in my refrigerator. So four nuts means four trees next year. They're adding up here in my forest. And now I'm actually starting to plant them in other forests around here. So here's the thing, because they're, they're not able to cross pollinate with many other trees, 
the viable nuts are in such short supply that all it takes is one chipmunk. And without a, an extremely vigilant, tireless human like myself, or maybe you, who is trying and hopefully succeeding at outcompeting them to find at least one. It's a huge victory for the species because obviously this tree is so healthy. And again, watch my episodes to explain why. The hint is in the name, the Miracle Sisters chestnut. But even, and I was going to say especially, but I don't have time to get into all the details. Watch the series and you'll understand. But even one that is dying of the blight, that, as I just told you again, produced two viable nuts this year, that's important. Because by finding those precious, rare nuts and not letting the chipmunks eat them, you can help the species overcome the blight. Because what's required is for those that are dying of the blight to be able to pass on through their genes how they are struggling against the blight. And it will take many generations. And if humanity still exists as a species, hundreds of years from now, then maybe with our help, the chestnut tree will, the American chestnut will be able to overcome the blight. This one's offering a shortcut that again, I don't have time to get into now, but even absent that you can still help because it's so important to pass on the adaptation, because, I mean, come on, this is basic evolution, basic genetics. Adaptation is going on. It wants to happen, but it needs your help. Because if we let the chipmunks eat them, then those nuts will never sprout and we will never see how the tree can adapt. That's my message to the world. You can help. Find a chestnut tree in some woods around your place and start looking. First find the husk and once you find some husks, then you know that it's time. Hopefully you can find them early enough in the season. But you know when to start looking, October. And then make it your routine. At least, try to go at least once a day. The best time is first thing in the morning before the sunrise to try to outcompete those rodents. And maybe you will find a beautiful treasure. And then learn how to striate it yourself in your refrigerator. There's lots of how-to videos, I'm sure, out there, or written guides. If I felt the need, I would make a video about it, but I'm sure that there must be something out there. It's not that hard. So, there you have it. Participate in saving a precious species.